Next we want to take a look at the graphics bins at the bottom of the interface screen. They're kind of in the same area as the DDRs that we just looked at previously. Those two big boxes on the bottom of the interface window. On the left hand side of the screen you've got graphics 1 and on the right hand side of the screen you have graphics 2. Essentially there's no difference between graphics 1 and graphics 2. Um, they're just there so you can kind of spread out the different graphics that you want to show at different points in your program. I'm going to use graphics 2 here just to make it easier. It's very much like the DDR that we looked at in the last segment. If I click on the Graphics 2 tab, I can see all these different elements in here. And items that you have in the graphics bin are still images. They're not videos like we saw in the DDRs. They're things like photos or maps, you know, some kind of still images that you've drawn or you've, you've downloaded from the internet or, uh, or taken with your camera, something like that. So right now we have four images in here and if you look at the four images that appear here, a couple of them have this kind of checkerboard background. That indicates that that graphic is designed to be superimposed over video. So all of the checkerboard area that you see there is actually transparent. So the idea is that we're going to lay this, this image of this, this graphics bar over one of the cameras that we have out in the studio. On the other hand, this image is a solid picture, a photo of a city skyline, and that's basically going to completely fill the screen so it doesn't have any of that checkerboard business going on in the background. Just like with the DDRs, you'll notice that you've got a name of the, the graphic there, which you can change if you want to. You also can set a duration for photos. So if you wanted to automatically transition from one photo to the next, you can determine in advance how long it's going to show each one of those before you actually do that. Um, and then if you, you'll also notice that there's a little gear button that shows up on the right hand side of each one of these if I hover over them with the mouse and if I click on that it'll pop up another little um, item that lets me modify certain types of graphic elements. So this is a, a kind of generic title screen uh, that has a space for the person's name and a description and I can click into that and then type some new name that I want to appear in that window. So that's for, uh, you know, specifically for that kind of lower third graphic um, that you can load in from the TriCaster. Um, okay, uh, other things that you can do in here are you can move the clips around. So again, the order in which they appear here can be changed just by holding down the left mouse button and grabbing the clip and, and moving them around the screen. So you can reposition the order of these the same way that you did the video clips in the DDR earlier. And then down at the bottom of the screen, you have a lot of the same controls down here. You have the same player controls that we looked at with the DDR in the last section. That doesn't quite apply as much generally to uh, graphics clips as it does to DDRs, unless you're going to set them up to automatically play one after the other. Um, what, what is important down here is that you have the same add button for adding additional graphic elements to your bin. If I click on that, little, uh, the big plus sign there, It'll open up a menu similar to the one we saw before. There are two areas where you might find elements that you could use here. One is in looking at the stills category at the top here, and you have a whole bunch of different categories here where you can go find still images, either from your session, someone else's session. They also have kind of a generic uh, collection of different background elements that you could load in in this section called Virtual Set Editor Content. There's also these titles down here below which are some kind of pre-made uh, title elements that have been created by the people that make the switcher uh, or that you can create your own custom ones or if you want to bring in a graphic say from your thumb drive or something like that you can click on this browse button down at the bottom it'll open a finder window here where you can go and look for the elements you can see the different hard drives that are available over on the left hand side of the screen or if you plugged in a thumb drive like I have here you can click on that and then you can go look around within the window here for different elements that you might want to bring into your program. So say that I find this graphic that I want to add to my bin, I can highlight it, click open, and it'll appear in my graphics bin like that. Uh, so the way in which you bring these in is not very different than what you did with the DDRs. Now it's also possible to make it play from one image to another image. So say that you wanted to do a series of photos, uh, kind of do a little slideshow segment, you can actually connect together these, um, these uh, graphic elements that are in the bin here. I'm going to highlight two of these just by clicking and holding in the mouse button and dragging this little box so it touches both of those. So you can see that both of them are highlighted there. 
And then if I go to the add button down here again, um, I can pull down to the bottom of this menu down here to where it says transitions. And all of the transitions that we looked at earlier when we were talking about how to use a switcher can be applied as a way of going automatically from the first graphic in the bin to the second graphic, then to the third graphic and so on. So I can click one of the transitions here, then uh, pick one of the subcategories, and then once I've done that, here I'll choose one of these ones called trajectories. I can choose one of these ones that makes the graphic fly onto the screen, and you can see now that it's connected together two of those graphic elements with these little boxes in the center that look like the little graphics or the little transition icons that we were looking at earlier. Now when you play your video back, it's going to show this first graphic for five seconds, then automatically do a transition to the next graphic for five seconds and then to the next graphic and so on. So you can, uh, you can create up, like, you can set up like a little slideshow where you have five photos in your bin and make it automatically show those for some preset amount of time. Okay, so how do we do that back here on the switcher? Well, just as we have buttons for DDR1 and DDR2, we also have buttons for graphics one and graphics two here. So if the graphic that I wanna show is in the graphics two bin, I just wanna select graphics two on preview, you should now see that graphic appear on the preview monitor here. And if you just wanna show that photo, you can use the take button or the auto button as we did in the earlier section to transition this over to program. So I can choose some fancy transition here, uh, select whatever kind of transition I want, and then push the button to make that appear on program. So it's no different than switching between camera one and camera two. You're just switching between a camera, say, and one of those graphics bins that we showed there. And then when I transition back, it'll take me back to live action from my cameras out there. Okay, now say that you want to be able to play these back several in a row here. I'm going to click on the first graphic in my bin, which by the way isn't a full screen graphic, so we just have that little lower third bar there. Now if I turn on that playlist button that we had looked at earlier at the bottom of the screen here, that's telling the, the switcher that I, that I actually want to play the first one, then the second one, then the third one, and so on. Okay, so I have the first one selected. Now if we come back to program here, now when I take this, it's going to play the first clip for some amount of time, uh, and then uh, you can make it uh, automatically transition, or make it manually transition by pushing the play button, and it'll start to play. After five seconds, it'll transition to the next graphic on the row, then it'll transition to the next graphic in the bin like that. Uh, so if you use that autoplay function that we looked at earlier, it'll actually um, transition to those automatically. So let me select the first graphic again here, turn on the autoplay function as we did in the, uh, in the DDR section previously to tell it to automatically start to play this. Now I have the first graphic selected, so now when I transition to it, it's gonna play that first clip for five seconds then do a fancy transition to the next graphic in the bin, then do a fancy transition to the next graphic in a bin. So it's almost like having a PowerPoint display or something like that where you can just make it trigger a slideshow for you and you can set up the length of those in advance to whatever you'd like. So that's a little bit about using the graphics one and graphics two bins. One other really um, powerful feature of the, the switcher that I wanted to show you here is this third tab on the screen here that says buffers. Buffers are uh, kind of a special storage place. They're a little bit like the graphics bin, except there are specific slots for each graphic. So if I click on the, the buffers button here, you can see that you have buffer one and buffer two and buffer three and a whole bunch of buffers across the, the top of the screen here. Adding a, a graphic to the buffer is just kind of like what we did in the previous section in the graphics bin. I can just hover over whatever buffer I want to assign a picture to and it, you'll see the little white uh, plus sign there. And when I click on that, it brings up our menu of still images or titles. So I can go find one of those that I want to assign here. In this particular section, you also have um, the ability to add animated elements. So, so if I scroll down the list here past just my still images like photos and titles, there's also a section here that says frame buffer animation. And if I click on any one of those subcategories, It'll show me things like these weather uh, icons, like sunshine or lightning or rain. Uh, or if I go to broadcast, you have like a little spinning globe there. Or effects, you have things like the fire or smoke. So if I want to use the smoke effect, I can just double click on it. And it now loads that effect 
into the buffer icon here. Now I could take this uh, directly to the screen if I wanted, but more likely you're going to superimpose these graphics over video, which we'll be looking at how to do in the next section here. So the unique thing about these buffers is that it actually uh, allows you to put an animated element on the screen. I have one of those loaded up here so I can pop up this little flame effect which is coming from buffer number one so that I can superimpose that flame and it'll just keep playing that same uh, element over and over and over. It's a looping element like that. So buffers basically are um, have the ability to hold, to hold either a still image or an animated effect like the spinning basketball or the, the smoke effect or the flame effect. Let me take that off of the screen here for a moment. It's also possible to move pictures and things like that directly from your graphics bins to the buffers. So to do that, let's say that I wanted to put this, this city loft background into one of these buffer slots. So let's say I have an open slot here in buffer number four. I can go back to graphics two, highlight the graphic, the, uh, graphic or the photo that I want to assign to that buffer, and then if I click the right mouse button, I'll pop up a little menu here, and I can basically choose this function that says send to. Send to basically lets me send this photo to one of the buffers, so I can then just from the little pop-up menu there, I can choose whichever buffer I want it to go to, say buffer number four, click on that, and now if we go look at buffer number four, it'll have that picture already assigned to it. So it's pretty easy to move photos that you've already put into your graphics bins to the buffers using that send to function. So that's a little bit about how to use the, the graphics bins and how to use the buffers. Next we'll look at how you can actually take those graphics and either show them directly to video or how you can actually overlay them over uh, a video coming from a camera uh, using something called a downstream keyer.